Welcome to the first session of the 2022 Virtual Palm Beach International Equestrian Center Educational Series presented by Adequan here at the Winter Equestrian Festival. My name is Miranda Tiona and I am happy to return this season as the Educational Series Program Manager here at the Winter Equestrian Festival. Last year, we had an exceptional viewership with viewers joining from all over the world and continental US. 50 countries over six continents worldwide. We decided to keep the series virtual this year, not only because of the health crisis, but also due to the incredible reach the series experienced last year. And this year, we have a very exciting virtual lineup. So please do check out our website under the educational series tab for future sessions and even to check out our video archive. Throughout the session to engage virtually with us, please utilize the Q&A message center at the bottom of your screen. It's a little icon, it says Q&A. You can type your question in at any time. It will not disturb the speaker and he'll be very happy to answer your questions at the towards the end of the series today. Lastly, I would like to say a huge thank you to Karina Brez Jewelry for providing a luxury item valued at $5 thousand dollars for the grand prize giveaway. If you were not in attendance at all at last series, just explain it a little bit. For every session that you attend, we can, which we can see the stats, we can see if you, you stayed on, <laughs> um, you get one entry. So the winner will be announced April 1, and you don't have to be present on the webinar to win. We will be sending you an email. And um, so we'll be using the email that you registered with. So Hope you check that. <laughs> now, with all that said, let's begin, shall we? I am delighted to introduce today's topic and speaker. Today's educational series session is sponsored by IBIX Performance USA, and the topic is visual training and mental health in horse riders. So our speaker is Dr. Larry Lampert, and he is a developmental optometrist and one of a select number of people in his field with a fellowship in developmental vision and vision training. Dr. Lampert sees patients from around the world for consultations and evaluations. He treats children who are experiencing problems in school due to visual learning disabilities, as well as professional and amateur athletes who want to improve their overall level of performance through vision training. He also treats brain injury patients, people experiencing visual complications from excessive time in front of computers and more. Using vision training techniques, Dr. Lambert has worked with players from the New York Yankees, Chicago Cubs, Cleveland Indians, Miami Dolphins, the Japanese Baseball League, PGA and LPGA golfers, the USTA tennis players, and world-class international athletes during the 1996 Olympics. Woo, <laughs> impressive. And Dr. Lampert has also been featured on the Golf Channel, NBC Sports, Golf Magazine, Golf Digest, Sports Vision Magazine, Wall Street Journal, as well as other national and local TV and radio shows. So without further ado, I will now welcome our honored speaker, Dr. Lambert, to um, unmute himself and begin prepping his very exciting presentation. <laughs> thank you all and enjoy. Well, thank you, Miranda, for that great introduction and a I guess if I did all those things, I must be getting pretty old at this point and had a lot of years behind me. Um, I'm representing IBIX Performance tonight, and we do visual skills training. Um, Miranda's mentioned some of our clients, also equestrians. We've done um, South American uh, Army equestrians and things like that. So basically, this is talking about that there's more to vision than meets the eye chart. You know, we all think like, oh, what are we going to talk about? Because I have glasses, I have contacts, I see fine. But most modern eye care just looks at how you can read a chart 
And is your eyeball healthy? It, it doesn't go into how you perform with your vision. And that's what we do. We do performance vision and um, raise batting averages, improve performance. And again, we've worked with equestrians quite extensively as well, even though that wasn't mentioned. So the model of this training, uh, my models are three pillars. One is awareness of your system. The other is tips based on that awareness and then actual vision training visual skills training drills that you do to hone your visual system. So as far as awareness, we look at an athlete and part of the evaluation is looking at their eye dominance. Are they right or left eye dominant? If you don't know about that, you have a dominant eye. 80% of the time, if you're right-handed, you're right-eyed and fraction of the time, someone can be right-handed and left-eyed, okay? It's interesting in pro baseball, over 50% of the players are cross dominant, like say right handed left eye, because that's the eye closest to the pitcher. Yet in tennis, that can be a little harder to deal with because if you're right handed left eye, you come back for a backhand, the left dominant eye can get blocked. Now, I just had an equestrian rider three, four weeks ago that I worked with. We worked with that um, had a right handed left eye situation, and, and she didn't even know there was eye dominance, and just explaining it explained to her why she was having more trouble coming from left to right and relying on her right eye instead of coming from left to right, you know, or right to left where she could rely on her left eye, which was her dominant eye. So your dominant eye, we usually test for it by just something simple, like saying like, let's say, you know, I'm gonna look at your nose and I put my hands up like this and it's kind of hard to see where the camera is here but I'm looking through my right eye through the hole. So I'm right eye dominant. It's usually the hole you would, or the eye you'd put a camera up to or a telescope or look in the microscope with. That dominant eye processes 21 milliseconds faster than the non-dominant eye. And you use the line of sight from that eye to tell you where things are, where the gate is, the center of the gate or whatever is coming from that. And another demo I do is like, oh, hold your finger up. So it's in front of somebody's nose, let's say, and you know, I'm right eye, so I close my left eye, my finger stays on the nose. If I close my right eye, boom, it goes way off to the side. So you're telling where things are from that dominant eye. Another thing we look at, make an athlete aware of, or an equestrian aware of, is their phoria. That's P-H-O-R-I-A. And that means what happens to the alignment of the eyes if we break fusion or cover one eye, does the eye covered stay perfectly lined up with the other eye? Does it drift out a little bit? Does it drift in a little bit? And a majority, the majority of people have somewhat of a drift. So if you want to try something now, you can say, look across the room at a light switch or just even hold a pen up like this and then just cover one eye, then the other. Go back and forth, right, left, right, left, looking at a light switch or the tip of the pen. And notice as you do this, covering the right, left, about a second and eye, does the object appear to move? And after a while, you might notice that it, it will start to move the same direction you're moving your hand, or it might start moving the opposite direction you're moving your hand. If it moves the same direction, that's called exophoria, E-X-O-P-H-O-R-I-A. And that means as you cover your eye, it drifts away from alignment from the other eye a little bit or outward from alignment. If it jumps the opposite direction, they're drifting in a little bit from alignment. And we make an athlete aware of this because when they have these type of postures, usually an exo will localize things a little further than they really are in space. Baseball players swing late at pitches, uh, golfers miss long. And then the esophoria, which is that opposite movement, E-S-O-P-H-O-R-I-A, they tend to think things are closer than they really are. So they tend to swing early at pitches or, um, you know, maybe initiate a jump uh, too early. And um, so just not judging where things are accurately. And what exacerbates this is when we do this for you, and this is something we measure in the office, we can get an exact number on this. And we repeat these numbers, these measurements and see, does the number stay consistent or does it change or fluctuate over time? So we have athletes, equestrians that as we do this test, these numbers change and as they tire, the numbers change. And as these numbers change, it affects their depth perception. So one of the most common complaints we've had from riders is judging the jump. And if you have one of these fluctuating phorias, 
your depth perception is changing on you uh, intermittently, let's say. So part of visual training is, can we solidify this? Can we make your foria more solid so it doesn't fluctuate? Your depth judgments then don't fluctuate if you feel like you're inconsistent on jumps. Um, then we look at vergences and we have eye muscles, right? We have muscles that cross the eyes, muscles that uncross the eyes. So we look at and take measurements of how strong are the muscles at crossing the eyes, how strong are the eyes, uh, the muscles that uncrossing the eyes. And we'll see, not only do they have strength, but is the strength they have balanced with each other, is the convergence balanced with the divergence, kind of like a bicep and a tricep. You know, are they developed so that they hold the eyes together relatively evenly as opposed to one being stronger, one being weak compared to the other, one being stronger compared to the other and out of balance, we call that. So part of what we do is we measure these measurements and then we do things to bring them to optimal levels and that improves performance, sports performance, equestrian riding. We look at accommodation, which is your ability to shift focus from up close to far away. So we look at like the flexibility of that and the accuracy of that. And again, that's something we analyze and we train to make this more consistent, more accurate. We look at things like depth perception. Um, we look at eye movements and fixations. You know, when you want to go look from, say, one gate to another or just one object to another, the human eye usually does an undershoot and correct. It doesn't go straight there, even though we feel like it does. It takes about 300 milliseconds and it will land a little short and then make a corrective eye movement to get there. So less efficient is if your eyes jump two times before they get there, if they overshoot and correct to get to the object. So part of visual skills training is analyzing that saccade or saccadic eye movement and then strengthening it or making it more accurate so that maybe we can even eliminate that undershoot and you can get there in 200 milliseconds. Complete more accurate eye movements in a shorter period of time, which then translates into better performance. Um, pursuits is just, you know, following and moving objects. We analyze and we work with that too, depending on the client and the type of sport they're in and what their need is for that. So again, what we do is not as much about the mechanics of your riding, that's, that's the coaches and everything, but can we improve the input from the vision to the body and then translate you know, from the body of the horse so that things become more automatic, they become more accurate and less thinking. And it's just vision to body. I call it instinctive reflex. You know, we think about hitting a baseball, it's, you know, four tenths of a second on a pitch and it's two tenths of a second to decide not to swing, right? So there's no thinking involved in that. It's a reflex, it's vision to body. Again, I call it instinctive reflex. Then we educate, you know, part of this awareness and tips of the visual system is educating the any athlete and an equestrian about focal and ambient visual processing. And these are terms that mean a lot more than just how you read the letters on the chart, right? We all judge, oh, the eye chart's the standard of care, but there's about a million nerve fibers going from the eyes to the brain. And the next system down is auditory with only 20 to 30,000. So there's a lot more going on with vision than just the ability to see letters on a chart. And we'll talk about that a little bit too. So we get into this focal ambient visual processing and the focal visual system is the one we, we measure at the eye doctor's office, read the letters. It's very small. You know, you'll notice when you read those letters, you jump from letter to letter to letter to letter with your eyes, right? So the part of the eyes that read the letters on the chart are very small. You almost, you're almost hard to read all the letters without moving the eyes, right? From about here out the rest of the way is peripheral vision or peripheral processing. And another word for that is ambient visual processing. So we think about, oh, peripheral vision, it's not just out here. It starts like in here and it goes all the way out. This part of the visual system goes into the brain 25% faster then the focal part of the eye, the part that reads the letters on the chart, and 20% of this goes for balance. So we look at this system, it's protection and navigation is this system. And this is when you're driving down the road and all of a sudden something comes out of the corner of your eye and you, you swerve to get out of an accident. It's not the 20-20 part of the eye that you're doing with, it's 
the peripheral processing over here, the ambient visual processing. And then this is navigation. So this is every time you walk through a doorway, you don't think about it usually. And you just walk through the doorway, you don't bang into it. This is your guidance system. It's not the 2020 part of the eye that is getting you through that doorway. So you can start to see now how this relates to riding and you know orientation and space. Are you in the right position? Are you gonna initiate the jump at the proper time? And is all this happening automatically? And we do a lot of the sports vision training because it's basically vision to body. You know, like I said, that instinctive reflex, it's vision as a dominant sense, going to body for a reaction. And we make that vision more accurate and we make it faster going into the body so that people do better. They win more meets, matches, whatever, uh, batting averages, teams we work with, some of them have gone up 30 points in team batting average. Um, driving safety even we've reduced car accidents through this this type of training because it just makes the visual processing system not necessarily letters on the chart and interesting about letters on the chart is that everybody thinks like oh my clearest prescription and i'm all set we've actually had two gold medal athletes they were about 20 30 20 40 in other words they didn't see the bottom line on the chart when they were giving contacts and glasses to make them see the bottom line on the chart, it actually slowed them down. So it took them into the center vision and one was a slalom skier and the other was a bob, uh, bobsled pilot. And it pulled them out of using their periphery, their guidance system for their sport and into the center vision. So all of a sudden they started looking, you know, more fixations, looking at the flags, looking at the gates and things like that and just, it kind of slowed them down. So it's not that I'm advocating everybody shouldn't have 2020 or everybody should. It, it's it's an individual thing and you've got to be working with, you know, professionals, uh, eye doctors like us who know how to work with this. You know, I had one golfer once that his clearest prescription made door frames crooked and he couldn't read the greens as well. So we had to weaken the prescription so it was not quite as clear, but everything was in the right place. So this is what IBIX does, you know, sports vision. We look at the system in an entirely different way than just giving you the clearest glasses on the planet for you and sending you on your way. Um, we talked about instinctive reflex. It's interesting, what we worked with the Minnesota Twins, two minor league players that get the most hits in that minor league came to me independently of each other and said, you know, when I get a hit, I can't even remember seeing the ball. So that's how instinctive it was for them. It may not have even reached cortical levels where they could see it. You know, well, like you're watching TV, it was just a quick two tenths of a second reflex for them. Um, so basically we talked about some of those skills, we analyze them, and we give you tips based on them. Well, you know, you're gonna have erratic judgments or your right-eyed or left-eyed and how to work with that. And then basically we train these skills, like I talked about, almost like muscle training, balance those muscles and doing all these activities that help all these skills. Whoops, let me see here, I'm not advancing. Let me see, what is wrong? Let me reshare the screen. And see if this works. Uh, let's go to the slideshow. There we go from the beginning. There we go. All right. So we've talked about why. We've talked about things going in the brain. We talked about basically focus and vision, even relating to your balance and navigation. And we talked about awareness that we give you eye dominance, the four U's you mentioned, vergences, accommodation is focusing, stereo vision, um, your eye movements, and all those are the skills, the ambient focal processing, and then visual mental training. We talked about the dominant eye processing 21 milliseconds faster. Talked about focal ambient processing 25% faster. Your navigation system when you're riding, you know, they say be at one, you know, with the environment. This is when you access your peripheral processing, um, that's what you achieve. And for baseball players, when we train the periphery processing, they will tell us things like the ball's larger, moving slower. They feel like they have more time 
We've slowed down the game for them. We've slowed down the ride for you, the event for you. Um, the opposite of the peripheral expansion we do is tunnel vision. You've heard of that. You know, you get stressed out all of a sudden, tunnel vision, and you don't perform as well, right? And so part of the visual skills training we give you is to teach you how to be in the big picture, you know, and the, the tunneling is called body alarm reaction police work we do. And it's the opposite of the zone, tunnel vision. You know, I had a baseball player who could see 2015 and he couldn't see the ball when it was 90 miles an hour. He said it was like a BB. So he was tunneling his vision. So keep your eyes on the focus and be aware of the periphery. It's something we train you how to do, reducing eye movements and use your periphery. Um, if you ever think about cyclists in the Olympics, and I worked with the Garmin Transitions team, they don't look all over the place. They're using side vision. They look like a school of fish, you know, and they're all using their peripheral vision to navigate like that. So basically, these are more, you know, academic slides where we have a perceptual mechanism. Visual resolution is, is the size of the letters and all that, judging depth, your accuracy of eye movements, or do you, can you make less eye movements? And not, you know, more you move your eye, the more you affect your balance negatively. You know, can we use our periphery and make less fixations and just glide through the event? Um, you know, all the decision making, it's not a conscious decision, right? I mean, you make some conscious decisions in your event, but when you're in the heat of the action, the, the, sit, the vision, the body thing is automatic without a lot of self-talk and the motor response, you know, the performance and horse control. Uh, this is just a little chart showing some of the relative uh, necessity of these skills for equestrians versus hockey. So AVS is static acuity, you know, how do you read the chart? So that's given a four out of five for both sports. Dynamic acuity is a little different. That's your ability to see things, but in motion. You can be in motion, the object can be in motion, the object and you can be in motion. Um, Again, the, the ball player we spoke of could see 2015 on a chart. He saw smaller than 2020, but he couldn't see like that when things were in motion. So that's dynamic acuity. We work on that. Ocular motor, the eye movements, the visual field, the depth perception, the focusing, hand eye, hand leg, hand body, or eye hand, eye leg, eye body um, coordination, reaction time. We improve reaction times, visualization skills. You know, there's some people that will just walk their event and not ride it and then sit in a hotel room the night before and just mentally rehearse the ride or what they're going to do. And techniques develop from methods that improve sports skills. You know, there, there's these things. We talked about dynamic acuity when things are in motion, concentration. Can you Concentrate, can you hold your eyes steady, your, your eye movement skills? Can you reduce eye movements? Can you make them more quick, faster? Um, memory, peripheral vision, vision reaction, speed, depth perception, and all those different things. So, you know, we talked about see well in motion, don't lose the objective or the focus, that's visual concentration, uh, coordination between the eyes, the hands, the feet, the body, remembering signs, competitors, roots see the entire field and circuit without losing focus or moving your head, you know, less eye movements. You move your head, you move your eyes, it affects balance. Good reflex responses, again, vision to body, instinctive reflex, I call that. Calculation of distances and space, uh, trajectories, just all of this visual input going into the body for a good reaction. Now, this is a quote I don't think I can see the whole thing. It's kind of covered here for me. But if you can see this quote, this is one of the army riders, uh, improved balance. You know, this is a quote, improved balance, accuracy, feel, eyes, ability to judge the distance to a fence, improving your horse's obedience, adjustability, responsiveness, focus, balance, rhythm, and straightness from Diego, a Colombian army rider. And then we want to improve strength flexibility and stamina of the rider's visual system using equipment. We have all this different equipment we use for that. And again, we wanna see, can we stabilize this for you? Can we improve the balance between the muscles? Can we strengthen if they need that and 
strengthen them in a balanced way, like a trainer would train an elite athlete, you know, bicep and tricep, not training one without the other, you know, you've got to keep them in a certain proportion to each other. Peripheral expansion, you know, there's, there's some things where people walk on walking rails to a metronome and they have people throwing bean bags at them from the side and they're batting them away, um, you know, with their peripheral vision. Motor integration, joint work, we improve posture, movement, um, space organization, control of motor execution, safety, property, vestibular oculus integration, spatial, all these things are things we work at, but it, they're all designed to just make this all automatic, just speed up the accuracy and the performance of the vision part of your ride. Um, reducing mistakes, you know, we, we tend to do that. We have done that. Uh, I said, even in driving, I think there was up to a 50% reduction in car accidents and improvement of 22 feet at 55 miles an hour in braking distance in senior drivers when they did this type of work with us. Um, errors that you can improve, you know, we see them, the deviation, the horse falls, time versus distance, right? Judging, you know, where exactly to initiate the jump, knocking down the rails, mixing your fixation points, um, all of these things, which you can read for yourself, they're right there, right? And then more things, you know, lack of alertness, anxiety, you know, there's, um, different drills we can use to reduce anxiety. And one of the things we do is, you know, looking from one object back and forth, object, object, back and forth to reduce anxiety. And now there's a psychology technique called EMDR, eye movement desensitization, something or other, where the psychologists now actually have you bring up, you know, a traumatic event and through eye movements, try to erase it from the neural pathways. So as vision training specialists, we've been doing this for years before the psychologists even did. It's just one of the techniques we do for anxiety. Um, the jump not being precise. We talked about fluctuating phorias, posture, aches, and, you know, things that happen from the, the vision not giving you optimal input into the situation. Um, some of the vision training for horse rides, these are just some of the things we do. You know, there's, uh, these are fit lights, they're changing fixation. This is balancing on the bottom there, balancing on the top. And um, some of the activities, dynamic acuity, where things are moving, the thing on the right, a pitch comes to you and you have to recognize what it is very quickly. Uh, peripheral vision, so these just are some of the things fixation, pursuit, saccades, alignment. We work on all of these things. And peripheral awareness or consciousness, you know, being aware. I mean, we talked about under stress, your tunnel vision, you become unaware of the periphery. And I've had some riders tell me about that experience when they've gotten stressed out. Rapid eye movements, speed up the eye movements. Uh, the quality, the accuracy, like I said, do we undershoot correct? Do we get right there in 200 milliseconds? Do we overshoot? Uh, I've had people with concussions that it takes them three to four movements to get to the next target. So we look at all of that and we have exercises for that. And that's Dr. Marcella with one of the riders. And that's a abbreviated, uh, you know, an activity that you can see. Reflexive responses, right? be quick and effective for an unforeseen event. And then this is fusion training. This is where I talked about the muscle training. So you wear special glasses where on the lower left, let's say only one eye sees the red circle and one eye sees the blue circle. And you have to use your muscles, turning them in or moving your eyes out. And the object with this is to keep them single. And then we move them in certain specific patterns to build up the eye muscles in a um, systemized way, not just a random way. So these are all activities that we can do this with. The one on the in the center there is a RAND dot stereogram. So there's different first degree fusion targets. We work with different types of targets to build these skills. And then, you know, we're kind of 
repeating, but concentration, visual attention to capture signals, you know, visual memory, the ability to quickly recall, visualization, automation. We talked about just instinctive reflexes, just things being automatic without thinking, uh, improved awareness or consciousness of external stimuli, sometimes noticing it without even thinking. Um, visualization, autom automation again. And again, there's all this scientific support. You know, visual training allows a 20% improvement reaction speed of the eye, hand foot coordination in, I forget how many weeks it's covered on my slide. And faster processing of information, eyes going to the brain, better speed, precision and activities. The military has shown between a 37 and 67% improvement, all the exercises after completing training. That was the US Army. 2009 trials with elite riders are now needed to further identify specific visual skills in the relationship with performance visual training should be included in preparation for equestrian sport participation keeping your eye on the rail gaze behavior of horse riders approaching a jump uh, by carol hall varley k and crundle in 2014. all right so the goal is of course better sports, better results. And I will tell you, this will carry over into other areas of your life as well. You'll be a safer driver. And especially, you know, when we work with teenagers, you know, we make them a safer driver as well, just because this transfers, you know, think about these skills transferring into all areas of life, not just training something, a splinter skill, we call it. We're like, oh, this got better in a room or whatever. It's got to improve your performance as you improve your performance on the track you'll probably be a safer driver as well, or other sports you're involved with will improve as well. And so better sports, optimize performance. Um, I think we talked about this already. Now, concussions or brain injury, we'll talk about that a little bit. So there's 40,000 injuries every year to the sports participation. 50 to 72% of people who suffer concussions have visual systems. Uh, symptoms rather. Now, this is interesting because um, Walter Reed, U.S. Army, they had a lot of soldiers coming back from the Middle East with concussions, and the Army doctors were telling them for a while, oh, there's nothing wrong. You see the letters on the chart. You have the right glasses. There's nothing wrong with your eyes, yet they had all these complaints. And what they found is that the peripheral processing had become hypervigilant in these soldiers after concussions. So we get complaints like, Oh, walking down the aisle of a supermarket is difficult for me because, you know, I'm overstimulated by all the cans on the, in the shelves. You know, the, the objects on the shelves are just bombarding me, giving me PTSD, fight or flight. And that's because this system became hypervigilant. You know, it may even be a little in ADD kids where, you know, they're sitting trying to take a test. Teacher just gets up to put something in the trash can. And it's so stimulating to their peripheral vision that it breaks their attention from what they're doing. So even in ADD, some of this is the system is just hypervigilant. You know, it's not calm the way it should be. But there's a lot of different visual systems, convergence problems, meaning trouble bringing the eyes together as a team. So reading skills are lost or they become more difficult or people start skipping words, rereading, and um, even some double vision. Double vision doesn't mean there has to be two of them. It can be just even a slight slipping like this on the edge of letters or objects. Um, one equestrian rider a few weeks ago said that while she's riding, occasionally gets some slight double vision. So you can imagine how that's hindering her, you know, and then there's other riders where you don't quite go double. As the eyes start to separate, there's what's called Panem's fusional area. The eyes can separate a little bit without double vision, but it blurs things out a little bit, all right? So a lot of visual symptoms with concussions. Um, vestibular, you know, the balancing system is affected. There can be visual field effects where like, oh, I'm not seeing as much now to the left as I used to. There can be what's called midline shifts. Well, now that my vision's closed up a little bit, my sense of center is over to the side. I'm bumping into the doorway on the side. So these are things we work with and fix. You know, one of the other tests that's interesting that I didn't mention was a Worth 4 dot, and that's a flashlight, but it has four dots in it, a red, 
green, green, and white. And the patient puts on red and green glasses. So only one eye sees the single red dot. The other eye only sees the two dots, the green ones. Both eyes see the white on the bottom. So I once had a, um, a Palm Beach resident, very wealthy guy, uh, was flown in on Ross Perot's jet to see, whatever, to have rehab, he had been in a polo accident. And we evaluated him and put these glasses on and he couldn't see all the dots. So he had 20-20 vision, but one eye, the center vision was shutting off on him. And basically he could see that happening and he understood and it helped explain some of him just feeling weird visually and kind of fix it up. And, you know, he was a elite Palm Beacher, you know, and he said, I, you know, we were the only one he would leave his county for to come see out of all the doctors that had worked with him because this was so impressive to him and his whole experience had never seen anything like this before. Um, management, eye movements, coordination, posture, spatial awareness, integration with other sensory systems and to control balance. Remember 20% of vision goes to balance, right? Some people are crooked like this and you do that and they think you're pushing them over because their vision is telling them this is now straight up and down. Uh, memory, motor responses, everything can suffer. And here's some of the uh, studies and literature you can see. And we've got these, vestibular integration, you know, all types of articles. Uh, they talk about, this article talks about yoke prisms. And this are le these are lenses that we actually prescribe for the peripheral processing system and not to see letters on the chart. I'll have patients that poke my finger and they're off to the side here a little bit. And we put special yoke prisms on all of a sudden they become more accurate. Posture gets better. They stop banging into the doorway. They're not as much of a fall risk. And in fact, you know, that we call these binocular vision problems, the trouble holding your eyes together as a team or the weaknesses there. And that's more of a risk factor for falls in the elderly now than cataracts or macular degeneration. Yet it is not even checked for in most routine eye exams. So part of what we do is to work with that. And talking about concussions, the University of Cincinnati football team did this type of training with their, this type of sports vision training with the football players and had a marked reduction in concussions on the field for the next five years. And so thinking about, you know, my thought is like, oh, we always talk about like, how do we rehab a concussion? This actually prevented them from happening. So maybe doing this type of work could prevent an equestrian from having an accident and having a concussion. It certainly worked for these football players and it was significant. More of it, you know, visual sequelae from these type of injuries, midline shift. That's what I talked about when someone thinks, oh, that's in front of my nose. You know, oh, that's in front of my nose. That's in front of my nose. No longer is that in front of their nose or missing, missing the targeting errors. So these are these midline shifts that you see measuring visual midline shift and disorder, spatial localization. These are people leaning, veering to one side or the other when they think they're walking in a straight line. And these are things we can straighten out and um, you know, help people with. So again, more visual therapy kind of activities that you can see here. The top middle is what's called a Brock string. There's a definite way to work with this. And you actually see two strings, even though it's one. And we teach you how to work with moving your eyes along the string and recognizing where your eyes are actually pointing. And we can put a, you know, a, uh, a round ball in the middle of the string and have you look at the string. Do you see the strings crossing? Is it at the bead? Is it before the bead, after the bead? And this will have to do with this exo and eso kind of stuff we talked about before. And again, more balancing activities and, you know, multi-sensory balancing while you um, you know, loading activities, balance while you have a catch or whatever. So what do you get with the training? And hopefully you'll um, visit us, IBIX, um, in the conference center at WEF, WEF, WEF. And what do you get? You get better attention, memory, concentration, coordination between your visual capacity and body movements. So we improve the vision part of that input, the vision part of the balancing system. If you want to test that out, stand up and balance on one foot with your arms crossed and then close your eyes and you'll feel a 
most people will feel a big difference in their balance. They usually are not balanced as well with their eyes closed because of all these fibers coming in to the balancing centers and going to muscles, um, eye movements to avoid loss of time. You know, suppose you can make four eye movements now instead of three in the same, four accurate eye movements instead of three in the same unit of time, or you can look at something for a split second and see, process, and remember much more of it than you did before you did this training. Uh, again, better detection of signals, images, or movements through the tracking field, meaning that uh, you just get it quicker. You know, you see it quicker and you're able to be quicker at everything you have to do, recalling images, viewing your tracks, your fields, greater automation and routine activities quickly and easily without thinking or being aware. And that's the ultimate goal, like I said, is just instinctive reflex, kind of like that, quickly getting out of a car accident with no thought involved, just vision the body and the accuracy and the speed of that. Um, better coupling of movements between the rider and the horse, you know, because your balance is better and there's just other reasons for that. Precise jumps. You know, again, the most common thing I've heard is trouble knowing when to initiate the jump, you know, inconsistent depth perception. Uh, fluctuating phorias that we measure that the other eye doctors you go to don't do. Um, you know, more accurate, fewer touches of the horse on the rails, cleaner routes, time optimization, less drifting of the horse on the field, uh, better decision making, better reflex response, where we've talked about that over and over again, vision to body, instinctive reflex, less falls or accidents. Football players prove that we've reduced falls um, in the elderly by doing this type of work. So you may prevent a concussion, right? Less postural compensations for your vision. So again, a bunch of references here that, um, I mean, you can look at, you probably have a copy of this PowerPoint or at least a video you can watch of this if you want to look any of these up. More of these things. And then this is... Um, IBIX, we're at WEF. This is the location of our booth. And there's Dr. Marcella there. And I would basically go by there and say hi to her if you're lucky enough to be there and um, check out what there is in store for you if you want to do something like this, improve performance, not only in equestrian riding events, but in life, you know, driving safe, just everything you do. Uh, become safer, all your other sports improve as well, because it's not like we're just training you for one little thing. It's just the whole visual processing system is optimized. And that's it. Let me stop the share. And let's see if I can find, hold on here. I got to find where uh, the Q&A. All right, so I see no open questions is what I'm seeing here, unless Miranda, you see something different. I, I don't see any questions yet. I think people are being a little bit shy, but I actually, <laughs> had, I actually had a quick question and maybe it might help give some people some time to think through okay. questions. But I, um, I was actually curious in terms of the, the visual training process when someone comes to, to see you, what does a typical, you know, like a first time assessment look like? Like, what would you go through with a, with a patient um, right. for that process? Well, nothing we do hurts. So basically it would be doing, you know, all the elements of a routine exam. Can you read a chart? You know, if you want a prescri prescription check, things like that. But then we would also be looking at not only like moving our paddle and asking you if things move, but we put the machine that we check for glasses in front of your eyes and there's what's called Risley prisms on them. And we make things go double. Oh, now you see it double. Now let me know when these two things are lined up this way. Let me know when they're lined up this way. Let me know when they're lined up this way, when they're lined up this way. And we can then judge, do your eyes drift out, in, up a little bit? And we actually measure numbers for this. This is what I was saying. When we measure a four, yeah, that's kind of how it's done. You're looking at a target, we double it. Let me know when it's straight up and down. If it's not a zero on the dial, 
which is heterophoria. So I guess that's still a phoria. But if it's any other number, then it's an exophoria or an esophoria, or if one eye is up higher than the other, a hyperphoria or hypophoria. You know, if someone has double vision all the time, that's called a tropia. Eyes that are crossed are called esotropia. But these tendencies of the eyes to go not be in perfect alignment are phorias. And so imagine the stress your system's gone through all day where your eyes kind of want to be aimed in a different direction from each other naturally. Kind of like when you look at your feet, are they straight? Are they towed out? Are they in? The same thing's going on with the eyes, but you're having to work it, holding that together all day. So kids with very high exophorias, a lot of times have reading problems and they skip words and they don't like to read and they can't remember what they read because they're using so much energy to hold the eyes together to physically go through the process. And I've worked with equestrians who have these same issues and it's hard for them to concentration. One about a month ago said that, oh, when I'm approaching a gate, it's like I, I can't, almost can't see it. I have to look away and look back. So her eyes are drifting apart and she has to kind of do that to regroup them together in the middle of a ride, right? After sports vision training, didn't have to do that. So I don't know if that answered for you. The other thing would be like, you know, these prisms rotating them. Okay, let me know when it goes to, oh, it just went double. Okay, what's the number? How strong was the muscle? When can you put it back again? And we're putting different stresses in front of the eyes for those type of tests. Oh, that's very interesting. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I, um, I'm actually wearing contacts right now. So I am, um, you know, my optometrist and I are, you know, very close. We see each other every year. And um, I think, no, I think this is definitely very interesting. And I've never really realized and thought of, you know, you know, the different, like how, I guess, what you were saying, like the connections with the brain and, you know, how you're right. able to, to you know, help your balance, coordination, et cetera, through that. I think it's really fascinating. So. Yeah. It's one of those things that you didn't know you didn't know. But once <laughs> you know about it, it makes a lot of sense, you know, when you think about, yeah, I don't look at the doorway. I just walk through it or I just day. What about when you daydream when you drive, right? How are you doing that? Yes. Thinking about my shopping you're list. Fine, you're all in that happens. ambient processing. So maximizing that helps you become a better rider, you know, and, and mo I, you know, we, we deal with more than equestrians, but we deal with equestrians and baseball players and football players and race car drivers and law enforcement and everybody who wanna, wants to hone these skills. And we're losing some of these skills because we're on devices all day long now. Hmm. Yeah, it's a very, very good point. No, it's very interesting. Um, and I, I actually see now, looks like two questions have come in. So I see that, uh, yeah. Yeah, um, go for those. Uh, <laughs> All right, let me go click on that. All right, so Laurel asked, my mom has macular degeneration affecting her vision and balance, I think. Would this training help her leverage the vision she still has and improve her balance? Um, nothing's guaranteed in medicine, but I would say that I have helped a lot of people. You know, if someone comes in, and they say, I want my I macular degeneration, I want 2020 back again. It's not as realistic as somebody who says, well, I have macular, but I want to bump into things less. I want to improve my balance. Um, then I would say, yes, there's help. You know, if there's realistic expectations, expectations, you can always improve, usually always improve the way someone performs with their vision, even though it's not giving them back their 2020 vision, you know, because there's much more to it. So I would say if you find the right eye doctor, you um, for someone with macular degeneration, go to, you know, fcovd.org. That's the fellow uh, of a college of optometrists. Actually, the website is covd.org, college of optometrists and vision development.org. And these are usually doctors like Dr. Marcel and myself who have this advanced training and abilities. And they would, more than your routine doctor, you know, your contact lens doctor, ask him if he did your phorias and your vergences and your accommodative amplitudes and your basin and base out reserve, you know, and he'll probably say, well, well, no, I just checked your prescription, you know. Um, so anyway, Joseph Valari, great information, visit movement space, pretty important. That is true, Joe. 
an anonymous attendee. How does your program help dressage riders? Uh, again, it helps any type of rider, you know, just by being aware of where you are in space, when to initiate movements, um, not be under stress, whatever you have to do, you know, in that specific area, eye movements, balance, and all that. So I would go talk to Dr. Marcella at the booth and ask her that question and go visit her. All right, so I don't see any more questions. And Miranda, I don't hear you, but I'm turning it back over to you if you want. <laughs> Excellent, yes, um, great. I, um, I, I did actually just see one more question come through. I don't know if you, oh. um, it's up to okay, you. Let me do that. You can just yep. throw it your way if, you, if you'd like. <laughs> huh. I only see four and it says six are open. Maybe, I'm, oh, I got to scroll maybe. So again, I wasn't being short with the dressage answer. It's just basically call us up because we talked to you a little bit about what type of issues are you having? Uh, are there any trends with astigmatism and perception? That's an interesting um, question because there's different types of astigmatism that's what's called with the rule against the rule oblique astigmatism and uh, you know there's different things said about you know some people with a lot of astigmatism maybe they're in less decisive than other people um but it can definitely affect perception i like i said the one person i the golfer with the astigmatism when he was correcting his glasses doorways were curved he wasn't able to perceive on the golf course. So his prescription had to be adjusted. You know, most eye doctors will just measure a prescription in the right eye, measure a prescription in the left eye, write them both on a piece of paper. That's your eyeglass prescription. Not everybody performs well or optimally with that perfect scientifically measured with a yardstick prescription, you know? So that's part of what our practice does is look at the person, what do they need? What do they need to function? You know, I had a woman who like with her perfect prescription, it made her sick, she couldn't walk down the hall. So one eye had to be given the, and by one diopter, a different prescription than her measured prescription. And she felt a hundred percent fine, you know? So everybody's different. Things are the same though, because this is what we do all day long, but, People are different. You've got to treat your client or your patient not the same way as everybody. I even had one um, from the Minnesota Twins, one of the ball players said, when I bat, I look at the shortstop. I'm not looking towards the pitcher. So he was doing it all with his side vision, his peripheral vision. He's a good hitter. Am I going to tell him, oh, that's the wrong way to do it. You can't do it that way. You've got to look at the pitcher. I'm not going to tell him that. Um, one dressage rider said the one who said I have to look away and look back at the gate for it, things to be solid for me her coach is telling her no you can't do that you have to keep your eyes on the gate the whole time well, I say well that's going to decrease her performance so it's not a hundred percent of the time hundred percent hundred percent of the people a hundred percent of the time you know everything is individualized and you know how you're going to perform the best you know, so we're the people who get people been the five of their eye doctors, not happy with their prescription. And we tweak things to make it happy. One golfer, you know, with a modified prescription, not the measure prescription, looked down his feet and said, wow, now my feet are in the right place. I feel like I can golf with these glasses. He wasn't able to golf with his glasses. He was on the pro tour. He was having problems. So, you know, we look at things differently than just measure something and prescribe you know, um, exam and exercise treatment sessions covered by insurance. I don't know. Um, you'd have to, again, talk to IBIX, give them a call. They're at uh, the WEF, the WEF. And then I'm sure you'll be provided with contact information to call in and ask these type of questions, have a conversation, you know, be happy to talk to anybody who wants to call us. And let me see. 
I think that's all the questions I see, unless there's any more coming in. I think that looks about right. Um, so, yeah, I think Saturday Let me just say one more thing is oh, we're sure. IBIX performance vision training and you know we help people that sometimes aren't helped with the traditional ways of doing things and we do other things and i would invite you to stop by the booth if you're around and if not just call us we're happy to talk to anybody um or email or whatever and, and give whatever information we can you know for these kind of specific questions that the answer for one person might not be the right answer for another person. So that's what I'm saying. Give us a call. No, that's great. Absolutely. And I um, certainly encourage everyone to like Dr. Larry Lampert mentioned, he showed that nice visual of where they're located on the showgrounds of the Winter Equestrian Festival. Definitely encourage you to check them out. So mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I think with all of that said, sadly, I think we're, we're coming to an end here. Um, so first, I just want to say thanks so much again, Dr. Larry Lampert, for your expertise and a very interesting and informative session. I mean, ultimately, this is an educational series. We're here to learn. And I know for me, I certainly did. So I hope right. you, yours as well did, did too. So Yes, and of course, want to say thank you again to our sponsor today, IBIX Performance USA, our very generous sponsorship. I'm very happy to have you for the WEF premiere week opening the show, so very exciting. And of course, we'll talk about our next session now. So our, our next session in the series will be Thursday, January 20th at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, and that's for WEF week two. So there will not be a section a session next Thursday for WEF week one. We will see you again in two weeks, January 20th for WEF week two. And what is that topic? So the topic will be the newest advances in security technology, artificial intelligence, the cloud, facial recognition, integration, the Internet of Things and 4K. What does this all mean and how can it help you secure your facility? Sponsored by CCTV Agent and Verkata. And of course, don't forget to register directly on the PBIEC website. Secure your spot and account as one entry towards the Karina Brez Jewelry Giveaway. And also be on the lookout of the video archive for the recordings. Um, previous recordings as well as this recording which will also be available um, to check it out anytime learn share with your friends social media um, we encourage it so thanks again dr larry lampert and you're welcome yeah this has been excellent and i think you know all of our viewers um, have a wonderful evening and hope to see you for the, the, the see you in two weeks for our next session. <laughs> Thanks again, everyone.